subject of what is a blessing, and uh, we, we, made, we made the introductory comment, this statement, that sometimes people say, uh, oh, oh, it was such a blessing. And you look at that and you think, you know, that wasn't a blessing. You, uh, someone says, uh, oh, I, you know, I got a job that moved me to, to way out back and there's no church there and, and I don't know what's going to happen with my kids, but I'm going to get paid twice as much. What a blessing. And I look at that and I think, that, that's not a blessing. And then somebody else thinks they're going through a hard time and they think, oh, I'm under the curse of God. But, but actually, they, <clears throat> they're just on a journey to a blessing. And uh, sometimes, sometimes it's clear that people don't know when they're being blessed and when they're not, and, and they just don't discern that very well. So, so we begin to look at that, and we made some statements. Uh, we said that some blessings at first uh, might seem like they're actually a curse, and some curses at first might, might seem like they're a blessing. And uh, you, you may not be able to discern that. You'll, you'll notice in um, chapter 42 of Job there in verse number 12, uh, you know, I've circled this and just put a little note here in my Bible as I read this again tonight. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job. And I put a little note in my Bible and said that blessings are best seen from a latter end view. Because, because that's the best way to work out was it really a blessing or not is to see, is to see where it goes. Uh, so we made that. We said that it takes discernment and time both to determine whether something's a blessing or a curse. Uh, we made the statement that pain is not an accurate measure of whether something's a blessing or a curse. Just because it hurts doesn't mean it's a, it's a bad thing. And then uh, we also said that a blessing can in fact become a curse if it is mishandled when it's received. And we went through the number of things that God may entrust us with and the, uh, the responsibilities that he puts on us when he entrusts us with something. And Sunday night, we, we moved through this. We looked at how a blessing can move from one person to another. And we used the example in uh, Matthew chapter 25 about how uh, the uh, talent was taken from one and given to another, and, and that blessing transferred, and we saw that. And, and then we made the statement how a blessing can move from a group to a group. And we saw how that God gave the inheritance of the heathen to Israel. And uh, then we also noted the fact that, that uh, God took the, uh, uh, the blessing of the heritage of faith that Israel had and, uh, and gave that to the Gentiles. He came into his own, his own received him not. And so this temporal blinding that's there, there was a, a transfer somewhat, as it were, of the, of the blessing of faith. And now, uh, tonight, uh, I told you that I would uh, uh, take you through this, uh, this subject of, of how, how to get blessed. So we've discerned a little bit of what a blessing is and what a blessing maybe is not. And now I'm going to give you some, some, some principles here on how to get a blessing. How do you get a blessing? Remembering that we said a blessing may be defined as an increase or more of some good thing. So a blessing either has to lead to an increase or, or, a, or an abundance. The Bible uses the word uh, in uh, verse number 10 of, of Job 42 that Job received twice as much as he had before. And verse number 12, we find that the Lord blessed the latter end of Job and the word more than his beginning. So a blessing is something that is an increase or more of some good thing that's a blessing. So we, we should, of course, want to be blessed. Statement number one, how, how you get blessed or how you get a blessing. Number one, you need to be under or in another who is being blessed. Uh, now, think about this. All our blessings come to us because we are in Christ. So be because we find ourselves in Christ, we've received abundant blessings. In fact, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, in whom we have, and then a number of things are listed, redemption and forgiveness and, and riches of grace. And, and so the, the Bible tells us, and we see that, that uh, truth repeated in many places throughout the New Testament, that because we are in Christ, we have received a blessing. So this teaches us something. It teaches us that it's possible to get a blessing by just, just being under or in another who is being blessed. So because God was pleased to bless his only begotten son uh, and, and, and we were found to be in him, we have received many blessings. 
we find this is a pattern. Uh, Isaac was blessed because he was in Abraham. And, uh, and his blessings flowed that way. In Genesis 26, verse 24, it said, The Lord appeared unto him and, uh, and said, uh, I'm the God of Abraham, thy father. Uh, fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed. And here's the statement, for my servant Abraham's sake. So Isaac, you will get a blessing because you are in Abraham and I've promised to bless those in Abraham. And so you can get a blessing by, by simply being in or under another. David made this statement. He, uh, he perceived that the blessing that was resting on his life was there because God was using him to uh, establish the kingdom for Israel, the chosen people. David said this, verse, 2 Samuel 5, verse 12, And David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel, and that he exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. And David discerned that, you know, God's blessing me because what God wants to do is bless Israel because Israel uh, uh, is God's people for their sake. Uh, I've received this blessing, this elevation, this increase. I'm getting more because, because God is blessing me to bless them. And so, so there's a pattern there that, uh, that as you you're either in, in Christ or in Abraham or, or even under someone, you can get a blessing just from that place. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about whether you would have wanted to be one of David's men or would you want it to be one of Saul's men. And once you look at it, you see because David had a blessed kingdom, because David was being blessed of God, those who were served under David received blessing. If you, if, you were, if you were pleased to be one of David's mighty men, you were pleased to get the blessing and the fruits and the spoils of an increased kingdom, of, of, of the advancement, the growth of the kingdom. And because David was being blessed and you were under David and you got to be part of that. And even if your name was never written in the list of the mighty men, if you were just someone in the kingdom, what great days to have been there and receive a blessing because you were under the person that God was blessing. But then you contrast that with, uh, with Saul's men and you find that, that because Saul was under the curse of God, he reached a point where God said, that's it, and he wasn't being blessed anymore. Simply being under Saul meant that you were being, you were being minimized in your blessing because God wasn't blessing the one you were under. Uh, so, and the result of that was that Jonathan fell in battle for no fault of his own because God was judging Saul, Jonathan falls. And so I'm saying that, that you can receive a blessing by just being in or under the right person. That, or the, or, and we'll see in a moment, it can be a thing that God is blessing. It's very important to remember that. Solomon was blessed uh, with mercy uh, more than others because he was of David. And the Bible said that. God makes this statement, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee and I'll give it to thy servant. This is in 1 Kings 11, verse 11 and 12. Notwithstanding, in thy days I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I'll rend it out of the hand of thy son. So God said, I will, I will extend to you the blessing of increased mercies and, uh, and more mercies, not for your sake, because, uh, because for David's sake. Because of that. So, so a blessing can be gained by being under or in around someone that God is already blessing. Think about this. Uh, uh, think about the fact of Noah's uh, uh, sons uh, received a blessing. Think about Abram's nephew who, who, got, who got a blessing and mercy and many things. Uh, not because he was worthy somehow himself, but, but because of who he was with. And so you find that. And you find it also can be a thing. Because we find, as we look in 2 Samuel 6, uh, that the ark of God, now not the boat, the box, uh, the ark continued in the house of uh, Obed-Edom, the Gittite. And the Bible said, And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertaineth unto him because of the ark of God. So the Lord had blessed 
Obed-Edom and all his household because of the presence of the ark that was in his household. So a blessing can come from just, from just being a, a, around or under uh, a, a, a something or somebody that God is blessing. Now I want to say this. There are certain coverings that God blesses. God has established some orders. I believe that God has established an order in the home. And that there is a covering in the home. There is a headship established in the home. And I believe that to be under the headship of the home is to be within the banner of blessing. I believe that the local church is one of the things that God has established. And to to be under the local church is to be under a covering, a banner of blessing. Now, if, if you don't believe that, uh, then I would suggest you look at people who are, are not under any local church and have cast off their covering and look at, look at how much blessings they're enjoying. And I, I, I've been in both places. I'm a great believer in local church because I see it in the Bible, but because I've also experienced the difference it made in being under a local church. And I was resistant to it. I, I was resistant to a anybody being an authority over me about anything but I saw that it was a it was it was something that was given to help me not to hurt me and God gave that and I would say that ladies who found the blessing of being under the headship in the home would be able to testify and say this is this God has given this not to not to hurt me and not to hold me back but to help me and bless me and the, and why because he established those things Because you find yourself in the things. Anarchy is never blessed of God. Because God has established nations and kingdoms and headship and rulers and authority. And and you don't get get a blessing in anarchy. When you have a breakdown of authority and a breakdown of headship over a country, nobody gets blessed in that. So so you you can find that you can just get a blessing, number one, by being under the covering or being in someone or under someone or being around something that God is blessing. Statement number two, how to get a blessing. Uh, Use your present blessings wisely and more importantly, I think, exhaustively. In other words, you can get more, you can have God bless you if you will exhaust what he's already given you. God is not interested in increasing something for you to not use. God is not wanting to multiply and give you more of something that you're already not using. And now this is is true with a church facility. This is true with an individual. This is true with talent. This is true with finances. This is true with all areas. You have to exhaust what you have, extensively be using what God has presently given you, and then God will see to increasing that. Uh, and, uh, and uh, vice versa, to, to have something that God has given you and to not use it, to simply try and hoard it and not use it, is to see it removed, as we saw in the Matthew 25 example, and given to somebody else who may have more than you, but they're using what they have, so God is, has, has taken what you had and he's given it to them. So, so, so that's the pattern, uh, being, being, being using, being, being uh, energetic in expending and, and spending the thing that God has already given you. Blessings always come to the busy. Blessings don't come to the lazy. When God was going to put a blessing, when God was going to drop a mantle, when God was going to put a, a privileged, selective, higher calling, God called busy people. And God went after that. And, and you see that with Elisha, and you see that with the Twelve, and you even see it with Gideon. In fact, it, it would be true to say, I believe, that, that the unworthy who are busy are more likely to be blessed than the worthy who are idle. And some people think, well, I have a great spirituality about me, but I'm not doing anything. Somehow God will just increase that. And that's not true. God will take, God, you know, you liken it to this, that, that, uh, that shiny new ro- rolls, you know, I'll be careful when I say these things because I've realised on Sunday the level of prophecy that flows out of me. I mean, the Leighton Hewitt tennis thing, you know what I'm saying? It, just, it was just like it just happened. Now, if I hadn't have said that, he could have won, you know what I'm saying? And, and, then, and then I couldn't believe it. I mean, I talk about a double confirmation. I find out that Kylie Minogue's coming to Australia or here. I had no idea. And, uh, and uh, so I have to be careful what I say here because 
Lord knows, you know, you, you just don't splash things about with the... With the anyway, so, so if, you, uh, if you imagine that uh, somebody has uh, some old car, some old wrecked, ruined car, like think of, think of Adrian's car, some old wrecked, ruined car, and, uh, and uh, somebody else has some uh, you know, new car that could, can go further and do more, and it wouldn't take a lot for that to, to be the case, but uh, if, you, if you had a car like that, you know, there's it's, it's little gain in having, in having the better vehicle to keep it in the garage. God would rather bless the less worthy, the less attractive, uh, you know, but it's doing something. Be better to be in the Model T Ford, but it's out there doing something than to have the Rolls Royce parked in the garage. And, and that's the point, that, that sometimes even those who are perhaps more unworthy but are busy... God is pleased to increase what they're doing, but, but sometimes the, the apparently worthy, but who are idle, God's not in that. So, so it's important, if you want God to bless, that you understand God wants you to use up what he's given you. And, 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 and find out, and you can see that. You, 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 you see it in the, in the, in the, in the widow who had, to, who had to give up the last meal. But every time she went, enough was there, enough was there. And you find that's how he does it. He, he wants you to exhaust the present so he can bless you with increase. And a lot of people don't understand that. You, listen, Christianity is not the, the realm of the fearful. It's not where you sit in the trench and wait for God to give the victory. You have to run and give a shout and draw the sword even when you're confronting a giant. You have to dare to exercise faith. You have to dare to step out with little for God to give you much. He, 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 doesn't, he doesn't increase those who live in fear. doesn't increase people who say, well, we can't do anything until we can see it all perfectly planned out for the next 25 years. No, that's not the way it is. The, the history of our little church here hasn't been that way. We, we've, we've, you know, God knows I wish it was sometimes. But we've, we've lived life on the edge a long time. And, uh, and we've, just, we've just done things. We, we didn't say, could we? We said, should we? And if we said we should, then we said somehow, well, we just will. God will provide a way. And the mercies of God has met us in that. And I believe that's what God would have his people to do, is to take those steps. So, so using that, number three statement. If you want God to bless you, use your blessings to be a blessing to someone else. So, so take what you have and use that to bless someone else. And I believe this, God will bless you. It, was, it should be remembered. It was said about Jesus, he went about doing good. And it would be nice if it could be said about us tonight. They go about doing good. And it's, 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 it's good to be a soul winner. It's good to, to, to witness and those things tie together. They're not one or the other. But let us not neglect the business of just being good and doing some things for other people and helping some others. Hey, the Bible said that he that uh, hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. And that which he hath given will he pay him again. God said, when you, when you help those who cannot give you anything back, I'll take that on as a personal debt to be repaid. So God is encouraging you to, to take your blessing and bless someone else. Seek to be a blessing to others. Make that, make that a quest. How can I do something? You know, some people's quest is what can they get out of life? You know, it's a great truth that people who seek their own happiness never find it. But people who seek the happiness of another find their own in the journey. And so as you seek to be a blessing to others, I believe that God seeks to bless you. And God sends that back. And I, Brethren, don't underestimate that. You know, let's, let's be independent Baptists and... And let's, let's be diligent and let's stand for the word of God and, and let's, let's do all those things. And we have to spit and snarl sometimes, we'll do that. But let's always be about doing good. Let's be salt of the earth. Let's be good Australians. Let's be good people in our community. Let's help our neighbours. Let's do some things, even if it means the person may not come to church. Let's just set about doing good. You say, what's the point in that? Hey, the point of it is, it's Christ-like. Point of it is that he said, where are the, where, where, you know, were there not ten? Where are the nine? Where's the rest? Where's the ones who never come back to worship and never came back to say thank you and just took the blessing and went? And you'll always have that. You'll always have that. But that's our Christ. 
who didn't say in foreknowledge, no, the, these nine won't come back, I'll just help this one. No, he, he went about doing good. And as you, as you seek to bless other people, God will bless you. And never forget that. Think, you say, well, you, Pastor, where are the poor? The, the, the poor are the little children who can't help themselves. The poor are the vulnerable. The poor are people in need. They're still there. you just got to understand. You say, oh, it's Australia. We, economically, it, it's good. The poor you have with you always. And, uh, and you just have to get an eye for that. Statement number four, how do you get a blessing? Just still be there when the blessing comes around. And this, this, this is very important. God rewards faithfulness. God rewards people who just continue. God rewards longevity. So you have to stay and stay. Do you know how many people left before the blessing came around? Do you know how many people went and just and just and never got it because they were close to getting it but just didn't stay? You know how many people never get to chapter 42 in Job? They quit before chapter 42. They quit before they hit verse 10. It can be said that the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. They quit before they get to verse 12 where it says he blessed the latter end of Job more. They never get there. Oh, some get to chapter 20. And some, some hang on a bit longer and get to chapter 29. And some sadly might get to chapter 39 and then quit. And go, what's the point? I was faithful and this has been painful. What's the point? Just stay, stay. Stay. Just, just keep going and hang on and continue. And sometimes you've just got to be there when the blessing comes. It's coming. You just, you've just got to hang on. You've just got to wait. You've just got to get through the disappointments. And, and oh, you, you say, I thought it was going to happen. It never happened. You know, I, I was thinking, I heard in the news today that, that uh, they, they'd sent a ship up to our people in, um, in Antarctica and, and they couldn't get through the ice. And it was to send all the supplies and and so they, they had to turn the ship around and send it back. And, and I thought what that must have been like to be there and be waiting for all the fresh goods to come in and, and you've exhausted all your supplies. And they said, they'll be right, they just might have to eat penguins. I was surprised they said that in the radio. I pictured, brother, 1,000 Greenpeace supporters going, penguins? You know, you can't eat penguins. There's probably headlines tomorrow. They said they'll just have to eat penguins if it comes to that. They'll be okay. But, you know, so, sometimes you think, oh, my ship's coming in. I can see it. It's, it's here at last. I've hung on. The blessing of God is coming. I'm here. I'm here. It's, it's going. And, and it leaves. Oh, well, what should you do? Well, quit, obviously. Just quit. It's, it's apparent. God's gone to sleep. He hates you. No one's going to like Just quit. You might as well. What's the point of being a Christian anyway? Just, just quit. No, because some people hang on. And they say, oh, that was a disappointment. Of course it was. I thought that was going to be when the tide turned. I thought that was when it was going to be said that uh, the Lord turned my captivity. But I must have only been at chapter 38. There must have still been a little bit more to go before that was going to happen. And you've got to hang on. And everybody gets tempted to quit at some level. You know, it's not just the domain of the unstable teenager. It's not everybody. Some of the older people who get disillusioned with some of the stuff they've seen. It's some of those who just get tired. It's some who, who seem to be surrounded by the success of others but don't have much themselves. Everybody faces at some point in some way the visitation of the voice that says, you know, just give up, let it go. And, uh, and we're clever. We try, and we, you know, when, if, when, you, when you buy that voice and you reach a place where you say, oh, I'm just going to quit, the next step is you work out how you can cloak your quitting in a spiritual excuse. You, you think of a good spiritual way, so it's, he's called me to something else. Or we, we feel God's called us to, you know, that banana plantation at Coffs Harbour. Or whatever, but, but you, you know, because, let's face it, Pastor, the, the world needs more bananas. And we feel in our little way that, that it's a way of helping. And, uh, you know, you did preach the other day. He went about doing good. And we find ways to put a spiritual reason on what we're doing. We're running away, but 
or well, God's called me somewhere else. We're quitting the ministry because we're just tired of doing whatever we're doing. And we say, you know, I, I need to let somebody else do this. I, I can't be selfish with this. Or whatever, whatever. And that's the danger, is that you will miss the blessing that's coming. And, and no, no, no blessing arrives without some measure between your chapter 1, chapter 2, and your chapter 42. I mean, it varies, but you understand, everybody has to get through the middle of the book. It doesn't matter who you are. I think our teenagers, the youth group, I think, is in a season of blessing. And I'm grateful for that. Lord knows it's not Jeremy. So, uh, I mean, I'm grateful. But, uh, but, but God, you know, it isn't always that way. And we, we've peaked before. I can look back before. And Nathan, you probably can too. I mean, some of us, we, we've, we've had, but you've just got to stay and stay and stay. And you don't quit. And, and, you know, sometimes people, they don't quit on the outside, but they quit on the inside. And it's the same thing. So they're still carrying on, but they're, they're just dead. They don't believe the blessing's coming anymore. And they're just, no, that's not the thing to do. Brother, you need to get your heart renewed. And don't quit. Stay, stay, stay. Just, just be diligent. Just Listen, some, some, of the, some of the people who are least likely to get blessed will get blessed more than some of the people who you would think were more likely because the least likely, the only thing they could do was hang on. Where the, the more likely maybe thought they had other options. Maybe they considered Jesus amongst their other offers. Just hang on, stay, stay, stay. Statement number five, and I'll move to conclude this. Be in the right places at the right times. This is so important. I've always had a theory that more bad things happen on a Sunday. It got lodged in my mind. I remember an old farmer said to me, he said, when Harold Holt, who was Prime Minister of Australia, drowned swimming in the beach on Sunday morning, he said, he, said, he said, said to me, Wayne, he said, I remember my dad said to me, son, if that man had been in church, he'd be alive this morning. And, and I often think of that. I can't help. I, I think, you know, and I, I, I don't want to get too bad. I, you know, you, I, Port Arthur and, and this, this and I, all, I just start thinking, thinking, thinking. And, and you know in my home, it comes up all the time. And anyway, whatever you think about that, I believe this. Just be in the right place at the right time. Don't be in the nightclub Saturday night. Don't, don't be in some places. There's no blessing there. Be, you know, what, what do you think? You think God's in the business of blessing the people at the flea market Saturday morning? You think God's blessing that? Where do you think God is? Where do you think your children are going to get the blessing? Think about that. Be, get in the right places at the right time. Don't, don't sit at home watching television when church is on. I mean, do you think God's going to bless that? What, what do you think's going to happen? Do you, it's not rational to believe that. When, when, listen, when God's people get together, you should just count it. I mean, I know that things, I know people can be generally sick. I'm not judging anyone in this. I don't, I don't judge anyone who, who doesn't come to something. I don't even ask why, and you don't need to tell me. I'm sure that you had a, a very good reason. I say that quite sincerely. My wife's at home sick tonight. But I am saying this. When God's people get together, doesn't it just make plain good sense to say God would want me there too? Hey, listen, if, if, if we all get together and God says that he's going to do something with us corporately that is different to what he does to us individually, it's two or more there, I'm in the midst, when, when he does that, doesn't it just make plain good sense that you ought to want to be there. Isn't that the, the best place to be for God to speak to your heart? Isn't that just might be the place where discouragement is going to be met? Isn't that just the place where you, your kids might get challenged and might get turned around? And boy, I, I, I thank God for, for, for people who got saved here who were coming to church quite a few times before they got saved. Thank God they didn't quit. Thank God they just kept coming. And maybe they came because people encouraged them, but there are people here tonight, Wednesday night, who are saved and, and, and people who, who, 
who bless my heart because of what I've seen God do in their life. Laura, you're one. And there are others. Because you just, you, you were here when God met you. And God did something and, and God spoke to your heart and the prayers of parents and all this, it all came to meet itself in the local church. Never underestimate that. Just being in the right place at the right time. You know, Jesus said to the disciples that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait. And he said, there's a place where you need to be when that blessing will come. And I want to suggest there are, there are places where just sometimes we know we need to be. And you should think about that. Get around the presence of God. Uh, number six. Uh, let's see, six. I know you want to know how many. Seven. That's divine, isn't it? There's seven points in this message. Uh, it wouldn't be good to end on six. So number six. You want to get a blessing personally, you. So we're all clear tonight on you. That's not... You, all right? Personally, live in the truth of God's word because he's blessing that. God is tonight found in the book, not in the land. I've been to Israel. It's a wonderful place to go. If you get a chance to go, there's great historical value in visiting. But I came away with an overwhelming sense of God is in the book, not in this place. The, the presence of God wasn't just... As I walked on the Sea of Galilee, I didn't feel a sense of Holy Spirit fever sweep over me as I walked in the possible steps of Jesus. I'm being really honest. In fact, the only people who said things like that were unsaved people who said, oh, it gives you goosebumps, doesn't it? And Suzanne and I were like, it didn't for us, you know. Or they sit in some great Catholic shrine built over some rock and go, oh, you can feel God here, can't you? And we couldn't, Brother Ralph. We, 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 we just, we couldn't. Pray for us, we need to be saved. But we, <laughs> we, we, we didn't feel that. But when we went home and we opened up our Bibles, we felt it. So, oh, we, we, we got a verse and said, God's here. Oh, oh, well, that one gave me goosebumps. Honey, look at that. Isn't that, isn't that. isn't that just God? And I realized God's in the book, which means this. If you get in the book, you get in God. What a wonderful thought. You can get a blessing by simply living the truths of the word of God. This, you say, Pastor... You know, you, you teach principles, principles, principles. Yes, you need it. You need it. You should remember some of them. Once you try living it, it works. And you, you, you come and, and listen, that, that, the principle, 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 they'll help you more than 100 counseling sessions. Preemptive. You know, it's changed today. We, people say, we, we need to start thinking about why people are getting sick instead of just medicine. Well, that's a great thought. We need to think about why Christians are just defeated miserable instead of trying to counsel them after they've crashed. And a lot of it is that we violate the principles in the word of God and we don't enjoy the blessing that God has put in his book. So if you will live in the book, now that's a wonderful thing. Think of this. If you were the Ethiopian eunuch or you had to take a hazardous journey to go to, to, to the temple and, and get there. Or, or you the Queen of Sheba and you heard that God was, was blessing someone. You had to go through all this journey and, and danger and exhaustive thing to get to where God was working. And, and, but now, you don't have to do that. You don't have to go to any place. Isn't this wonderful? It's here. What an amazing thought. The, 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 Jesus came and the apostles spoke and God used holy men and they breathed out and the canon of scripture was complete. And we live on the history side where we got it all. There's nothing more to be added to this. It's finished. And it's been entrusted to us. That's a wonderful thought. And, and, and you know, you, your health mightn't permit you to go, but you can, you can cradle this book. It can, it's precious. I remember Joni Risso, how she highlighted her Bible and her, 
her dying weeks as she, I never forget that, going there. She asked me to do a funeral and, and I saw all the Bible. And, and I, I was only thinking about that the other night. I was thinking how precious the promises of God must become as you, as you know. You know, if you, if, you, if, you, if you know that you're going to cross over soon and how precious that becomes. Well, it should be precious now. But if you will live in the book, God is in that. And, uh, and that's the wonderful thing. You're in a church that is not encouraging you to look at a man. You're in a church that is saying, get into the book. The, you're in a church that says, if the man contradicts the book, the man is wrong. See, that's different. The cults promote people. And, and, and others say, well, you, you've got to go through the priesthood. No, thank God Jesus is all you need. And you can, you can get the book. Thank God the Holy Spirit will speak to you in the Word of God. Now, he's given teachers and he's given preachers and he's seen fit to do that for, for the local church. But the book. And then the last thought, number seven, and Nathan's going to come do prayer requests. Uh, give credit to the blesser more than the blessed. This is important. Now, the Bible says, in everything give thanks. And you should. But in some things, you better give glory. There are some things you better, you better make sure that God gets the glory. Now, some people can do this. They say, someone say, oh, oh, pastor, that was a wonderful message. But the power of God rested on you tonight. Well, son... The glory is all God's. <laughs> but you know it isn't. You just know it isn't. Because really, they're inflated. They've actually believed that, that they're it. And then someone else will go, well, uh, thank you, I'm glad it was a blessing. But inwardly, the glory will be God's. And what I'm saying is, the, it's not the words. You know, we've, we, 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 we've practiced words of humility. But you can have a heart of pride and little words of humility. Or you can, you can say, well, you know, all the, all the glory is God. I just like to give God the glory for what he's been doing in my life. And really it's about, let me tell you about my life. Let me embrace you in my story. Let me, let, let me show you how wonderful. You know what? And you can see the heart saying, no, you're saying give God the glory, but, you know, and some people come to sing and I just want to give God the glory. But they don't. They want a star. They want to get a performance and have a recognition. So, so, so when I say that, I mean it quite sincerely. Give, and you have the purpose to do this in your own heart. Give the credit to the blessed and more than the blessed. And, uh, and, uh, and thank God that somebody's blessed. And, and, you know, we don't diminish that. The honour to whom honour is due and all of that. But, but the glory belongs belongs to the Lord. And it's very important that we do that and uh, we cultivate that kind of spirit. All right, that's uh, all I'm going to give you tonight. And uh, if, we, uh, if we take up some more of this, uh, we will. And if we don't, you've got it. Okay, Nathan's going to come do prayer requests. Uh